I used to do psychological testing, so I'm a clinical psychologist. I used to also see kids in my practice, but I'm too old and tired now to see kids. So I just asked the parents to bring me photographs of their children. And they used to actually give me nice photographs, so I would put them in my file. Now they just hand me their cell phone. And I but it works. I, I see the kids. And I, I, um, when I did psychological testing, I would look forward to the days when I could tell parents that there was nothing wrong with their child. And I came to find that parents were really disappointed with this news. <laughs> and I started to think that at least on the west side of Los Angeles, every child was either learning disabled, gifted, or both. <laughs> that the normal curve had somehow died. And I was talking about this in the South, and a woman came up to me on the book signing line, and she said, in this very conspiratorial little voice, she said, Dr. Mokul, our son is a certified genius. And I couldn't help myself. It just came out of my mouth, so I warn you, who knows what I would say on the book signing line today. I said to her, it goes <laughs> Just wait for algebra two, honey. <laughs> Market is very unstable. Technology is changing so quickly we can't imagine how we're going to control that and keep our children safe online. There's a lot of things that parents are genuinely worried about. So what we do with our worries is we narrow them down. We forget about all the things we can control, and we think about the one thing we can control. And that is whether or not our child gets the good or the better second grade teacher. <laughs> but we know we're not allowed to request teachers, so we have to speak in a secret code. <laughs> This is how the code goes. Given Trevor's learning style. <laughs> In this school, do you call the teachers by their first names or by Ms. and Mrs.? Okay, okay. So, given Trevor's learning style and given Mrs. Meany's teaching style, <laughs> I was kind of thinking that Trevor would be better off in the other second grade. But while you're dividing up the kids, Max and Henry, I think they would do really well with Mrs. Meany. And you know, kind of, if you try to orchestrate it, not here, but in other schools, you might say, you know, he'll, he'll also, I think it will help his concentration to have the mountain rather than the garden view. <laughs> and he does prefer still to sparkling water, the little bubbles that tickle his throat. No, we get so preoccupied with whether or not everything is perfect for our children. I, I, um, I love George Carlin. And he says in his, I, I'm so old, I call it his record, his CD, We Are All Diseased. He says we are completely preoccupied with child safety. He says, whatever happened to natural selection? <laughs> it used to be that if a child swallowed seven marbles, you did not want that particular child to reproduce. <laughs> and in Los Angeles, you hear the parents, not so much here, but you might have a little version of this, like, the, the, you know, the five-year-old is riding his tricycle down the street, and the parents running after the child, shouting, drive away, drive away, drive away. They could figure that out. <laughs> Maybe not. So they're, they're very, very adorable. And then, puberty, age, this is true, this is science. Puberty now lasts from age seven, no, adolescence lasts from age seven to 29. This is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But it's good to know, it's good to know so that you don't have your heart broken and feel betrayed every single minute and you worry about their character. So what we do is we take a snapshot of these children and we imagine it's the epic movie of their life. It's not. They're just going through these phases. 
So why seven? The American Pediatric Association has changed the definition of precocious puberty because it is considered perfectly normal for girls to enter puberty at age seven. So each generation of Americans is larger than the last. It may also have to do with some of the pesticides and plastics and the other stuff that that's that stuff we worry about so much and that we want to request the good second grade teacher. But they do enter puberty younger than most of us do. The 29 part is because neuroscientists have discovered that the prefrontal cortex, so this is the part of the brain responsible for executive functioning. It's the part actually right here in the front. And it is the part responsible for good judgment, planning, delay of gratification, all those signs of maturity. The prefrontal cortex we now know finishes developing in girls around age 24 and in boys around age 29. But that explains a lot. <laughs> So I'm going to propose a 12-step program for parents. Parents Anonymous. We will admit that we are powerless over, over protection, over facilitation, over scheduling, over indulgence. The expectation that children would be good at everything and low standards for ordinary domestic responsibility and family citizenship. So the first tenet of my 12-step program is that we tolerate their clumsiness, their short-sightedness, and their cluelessness. They're just kids. Good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. I have a friend who has six brothers and sisters, and her father used to say to the children, I love this phrase, he used to say, well, I see you've gotten yourself into a mind fix. It's going to be interesting to see how you get yourself out of it. Number two, to be alert but not alarmed. To be like a lifeguard and keep a vigilant eye, but don't jump in to rescue them unless they need it. Number three, be 